Anna's out of frame. Cut. <laughs> Anna's out of frame. She has slid into the little pool. Into the, of, into the lake. Yeah. <laughs> into the little I lake we've built. My name is Anna Silk. For six seasons, I played Bo on the hit TV series, Lost Girl. I am so happy you are here for the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast to take a trip down memory lane with me, the amazing cast, and some very special guests. I'm so glad to finally be able to say the family is back together again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast, where we will be discussing season one, episode three. I'm going to introduce my co-host for today. She is the incredible and unique talent that brought Kenzie to life. That's right. Please welcome my on-screen sister and one of my dearest friends, the beautiful Ksenia Solo. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you too. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh I cleaned God. up I cleaned up for you, but only well, for you. So. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, Ksenia, we are gonna talk about what season are we one. Talk about? Season one, episode three. Season, of, season one of, of what? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if you remember a show we did called Lost Girl. L- 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 Lost Girl, huh? No, Although, you know what? Over the years, whenever I've tried to tell people the name of the show I was on, they're like, Law School? And I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> Lost Girl, Lost Girl. Come on, You're people. like, a little bit of a different concept than <laughs> Law School. Um, so I have some questions for you okay. about this episode. First, should I'll I say- be nervous? You should be very nervous. No, you should okay. not be nervous. You should be excited because, oh my God, this episode was amazing. Um, it was called O Kappa My Kappa or Sorority, depending on where it aired, I think. Um, and it was written by Michelle Lavretta, who mm-hmm. we know and love and directed by Paul Fox. And I think that was the perfect combination for this episode. Um, and a basic synopsis was that Kenzie and Bo go to uh, undercover to a college campus to rescue a missing girl. So my first question for you How did you feel watching it? And what sort of were your first impressions that came up watching it? I was so glad that I got this episode because in the haze of like season one, for some reason, I completely forgot about that episode and that we had like gone undercover to the sorority So I was like, okay, episode three, like just no memory of what's it about. And when it started, I was like, oh my God, this was one of my favorites to film. Like, how could it have, you know, uh, like, why did I forget about it? Um, So I was, it brought me a lot of joy. Yeah. Um, And I could, I could feel how much fun we had when we were filming it. And I just had like a huge smile on my face like the entire like, the entire at the end I was like my cheeks hurt and I'm like this this was a, I'm so glad I got this one because it just just was so much fun I love um the beginning of like Bo and um Kenzie like opening their you know investigative yes. services and that, that's the, that was what started that was in that episode right when Kenzie yeah. comes up with that idea. Of course, it's Kenzie's idea. And that kind of set up the uh, creature of the week mm. style of our first season, right. which we kind of got away from in in further in future seasons, which yeah. I think probably was good for the evolution of the show. But I loved that creature yeah. of the week stuff. I really, I mean, I like, I like procedurals and I love that <laughs> yeah. we kind of set up our show that way. And of course I love that it was Kenzie's idea uh, to come up with that. So yeah, I, I know. I, I love all, um, like all the scenes we ever had in our kitchen. I just oh. have such fond memories of. And when I saw that one, you know, the, the beginning of the business, um, man, it just made me miss those days. There was so much, um, I don't know. There was so much freedom and like play and there was no, I guess, like expectations of 
anything really because it was season one and we were all just discovering and enjoying the material and enjoying getting to like know these characters and, and, you know, wear them like a glove, which first season, you know, everything was still, um, unknown. And I think, I I, I, I mean, for me, um, I can't speak for anyone else, but for me, every scene was just like discovering who is Kenzie and who are these characters around. And, um, Oh, I just loved it so much. And sorry, I'm going to keep rambling because no, it was please, a lot do. of things I loved. There's a lot of things. Um, the scenes between Bo and Dyson. Oh, I know. I just had forgotten Bo. about the beginning of it all. I know. That's that's what I was. That's what I've been holding in. Is that I forgot <laughs> about the <laughs> no, no, no. It's what I've been f- forgot about too. Was like that innocence. Bo mm. was so innocent. And like a teenager in this world of Faye and like figuring out who she was and that Dyson is so sweet to her, but she is so innocent and just like wants to do well. And, you know, that's why I love, I I feel like episode three is really where Bo and Kenzie kind of come together and this dynamic of sort of the weight that Bo had, the kind of seriousness and the approach she had in the world which was really innocent. And then Kenzie with this street smart kind of, um, they, they were just such a good, our yeah, chemistry, yeah. our mm-hmm. chemistry was ridiculous. And I think I, would it's not that I forgot that. It's just been so long. First of all, we were so young. Oh my God. <laughs> it, was, it was a minute ago. It was like it a just, minute ago. Yeah. And we were so young and you, you're right. We were discovering everything. It was the very beginning. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like this big sort of free fall into this space that we didn't, totally understand. And we were finding everything, but it really unfolded in such a beautiful way. And I feel like this is the episode where Kenzie and Bo really start to find their groove, find their groove. Yeah, absolutely. That, um, the, the scene with you and Dyson at the end, I have to say oh, at the end of the episode at the, in the bar, um, yeah. there was like a specific, the whole scene I think is so beautiful and I think it's one of my favorite scenes of like the entire series. Wow. And the moment when you say, um, what was it? Like, I thought we were on the same page or I thought we understood the same thing. Yeah. I can't remember the exact line, but, and just everything that Dyson's holding in and what he's dealing with. And this, like you said so beautifully, like this innocence of thinking like, we finally got together and this feels so right. And this feels so good. Like this is going to in, in Bo's mind, like continue forward. And just that, I don't know. I just love no, I, I, that, that scene the so much. end scene was, was there were so many layers to it, you know, yeah. you've got trick back there and, you know, mm. watching this and he has kind of orchestrated this and Dyson knows it's the right thing to do. It also tells you how powerful Bo is in this new world. And she doesn't really know it yet. Yeah. Um, and she's her, she gets her heart broken, you know? Yeah. Um, cause he's making out with Kayla. Ugh. Kayla. Ugh. I actually got like kind of mad <laughs> when Kayla yeah. came on screen. <laughs> the actress, the actress was wonderful, of course. Was but, wonderful and beautiful. Um, yeah. But when she came, I was like, you get out of there. Get out of there, Kayla. Yeah. Um, anyway, but yes, I was going to say also, uh, that I feel like for Bo and Kenzie, they really played to the top of their strengths in this episode too. We saw Mm. like the best of what they could do, the top of their intelligence. You know, there was just, I mean, any scene that Kenzie's in, frankly, has an element in there. I mean, this is what you were so amazing at in this role was finding things that were not on the page, you know, that brought Kenzie to life in such a beautiful way. I I mean, I don't know if hula hooping was in the script, but maybe it was, (laughs) but either way, it was amazing. The handshake was amazing. Um, and there was a tiny little layer, I have to say, Ksenia, in here where all the sorority girls, oh, first of all, Kenzie's reaction to having to wear pink is one of my favorite reactions. Um, but the sorority girls all hugging Kenzie and Kenzie being like, oh my God, okay, there's hugging or whatever. There was a tiny little moment that I saw, and I don't know if you did this on purpose, but a tiny little moment where there's almost like a moment where she enjoys it. It's like something she's never had. Let's go with that. Yeah. Let's I go had with that. Let's a lot of different <laughs> acting layers that I was, that I was playing and I'm so you know glad what? that came off. <laughs> I will say though, you know how, when you start acting, you always hear like 
the camera doesn't lie. You know, it captures everything. Yeah. And I've always thought that was such bullshit because, because there's so many things in my head while filming Lost Girl <laughs> <laughs> that the camera did not capture or it interpreted it a little differently. A let's, little say, differently. let's say that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, there were so many, so many great things. Okay. Let's go to our next question. Okay, but, but sorry, oh, before yes. you move on, um, thank you for your kind words. But just so you know, I was just trying to keep up with you. So oh, please. No, no, no. It's true. It's very true. And like you said, just going back to like the chemistry between Bo and Kenzie and the chemistry between us, like that's that's like this um magical thing that you can't uh fabricate if it's not there. Yeah. Obviously actors work together all the time that may not particularly get along or like each other and you can make it work and it can of course, you know, come off the screen that there's um, you know, a relationship there, but to have that magical alchemy that we did um w- honestly it was like I don't know what number of a percentage, but it was a, it just a huge, um, it was like a, a safety net mm-hmm. around us where we were like in our own, um, bubble where because of this alchemy and this relationship and this chemistry, we could, we could play and we could discover Bo and Kenzie like we did. So, yeah. I thank you for I, that. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. And I, I will say that, you know, there's the logistics of making a show, the the crazy hours, you know, the exhaustion, the there's so many things that go into it. Cause people always say, like, are you guys friends offset? And yes, of course we were, but there was there's so much happening around us while we're doing that that sometimes the only time we came together was between action and cut, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um and, but I will say that there was this feeling that was, I felt mutually between us that we would have walked through fire for each other. Yeah. You know, um, that's oh my gosh, now, now I'm going to get emotional, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what worked so beautifully, beautifully. Oh my gosh, literally crying. <laughs> okay, stop it. Snap out of it, Silk. Okay. Um, let's, let's go to our next question. Okay, and thank you both. for everything you just said. Um, Oh, one of my favorite scenes of all time, Lost Girl of all time, is the scene where Dyson wolfs out and Kenzie's reaction to oh that. It's <laughs> epic. It's epic. You know, I, I honestly carry around that that Chris Holden Reed is actually part wolf. Like, I actually think he's oh, part yeah. wolf. No, like, 100%. His, his, I, and anyway, that reaction There's no other was, reality. <laughs> I know. Um, so what was your best memory or favorite parts from this episode? I think we've touched on a lot of that stuff already, but um, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, I mean, honestly, I could go on for days about all the Bo and Kenzie scenes, especially in our house. Like the I house know. was its own character in the show. I lo- yeah. I loved the bathtub scene at the end. Mm. And again, like I feel like specifically the kitchen and the, the bathroom were like, like you just, you couldn't go wrong. Every time we had a scene in either of those places, like you knew it was like fun and it felt full of um, play and like girl power. Yeah. And yeah. So it's really hard to choose like one great memory. Yeah. Um, no, I, I hear you. Uh, it was like a character on the show. Yeah. I know it was so comfortable to be there. Yeah. Um, I actually love the scene between Bo and Kenzie in the office though, too, when they're like snooping around in the (laughs) the Dean's office, uh, because there's just, that just felt like the play they had, you mm-hmm. know? Um, can I just say the guest stars in that episode? Oh my God. And, and across were, the board, I mean, we always had yeah. incredible guest stars on the show, but the, the sorority girls and the Dean, and they were incredible. I agree. Um, Shauna McDonald, I believe yes. her name is, yeah. who played the Dean. She's, yeah, she's fantastic. Um, the sorority girls were were so much <laughs> fun and really yeah. great to be around. Yeah. yeah. We've been so lucky. Very lucky. With the people that have come on board. It's hard so to lucky. come on to a show as a guest so star. So hard. You know, we always, they just always knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, they really did. 
They um, made us look better. So totally. Thank you. Totally. Thank you, Lost Girl <laughs> guest stars. You were <laughs> magic. Yeah. Um, most difficult or challenging part of this episode? Definitely running after Chris Holden Reed in the woods in heels. I think maybe that marked the beginning of Kenzie running in heels because it happened many times after that. It did, yes. And I remember how afraid I was to break my ankle. I had not been seasoned yet in the art of running in heels. So you know that they actually, I think between season one and two, they got me running in heels lessons. What? <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> they did. And How I, did I miss I, that? Well, I, I was not as good at it as you would think. <laughs> and I had to like run up and down this driveway with stunt performers in my heels. Um, You're kidding me. No, it actually kind of helped. It kind of yeah. helped me. I wish I had been invited. I feel so You know what though? It, it, it was part of the Kenzie charm, I think. And you did it very well. The, let's just let's just stay in the real world. The wobbly running. Thank you. The wobbly so running. Very, um, very kind. I have a question for you. What were you chugging in that in the uh beer chugging scene? I'm so glad you're asking. Yeah. <laughs> because what, what I was tr- trying to remember. Um, I have no idea. And I was I'm not very good at those kinds of things. Maybe it's because I I don't know, didn't have that like college experience or didn't, was never invited to those cool parties where people did that. Um, So I was watching myself and I'm like, am I, I mean, I feel like I'm, you know, convinced that I'm like drinking, but a part of me thinks that that was, I was just faking it and there was nothing in there. Oh, so sorry to disappoint. No, that's okay. But that, that may have been my best acting ever. <laughs> if you thought I was drinking, chugging. I did. Say. I believed you were chugging. Okay. Um, most difficult, challenging part of the episode. I'm going to try to answer. I've got a couple yes, of answers. Please. One was that I remembered in the scene where we're in the clubhouse and there's a map on the table uh, and, <laughs> and Kenzie yeah. comes home. She's like all disheveled. Yeah. And I had to like, I, I couldn't remember my lines to save my life. I remember this because I had to look at the map and say very logistical map like things. Yeah. And I couldn't remember any of that. So I so I took our sides, which um are like the mini scripts that we have on set, and I cut out all my lines and I taped them all over the map. That's so, so smart. I'm actually reading. It was so smart. Um, very resourceful, very Kenzie of me, actually. <laughs> so that's just a little behind the scenes secret. Um, that was a challenge for me I don't on that. Remember that. And I'm gonna tell you a sad ch- challenge. Okay. Sad challenge. A, 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 a piece of the episode that I had forgotten that when watching makes me very sad. And okay. it, will, it will highlight the kindness of the amazing Chris Holden Reed. So, you know, the scene in the bar yes. where Dyson and I are sitting off in the like side room. Uh-huh. Um, I think I have a map out again. Once again, I'm looking at a map. You want the damn maps. You need the damn maps. I had a lot of maps in that episode. Um, anyway, and we're, we're talking about the case. And then at the end, we have a little kiss and Dyson gives me a little like zap of energy. Anyway, if you watch that scene, which hopefully everyone listening had a, a chance to rewatch this episode before listening, um, you can see that I am quite glassy eyed because I had just finished crying my head off. Not very professional, I realize, but I did. I finished crying my head off. And the makeup artist, Linda, our incredible makeup artist, had to pull me aside, fix up my face. I walked back in to do my close up. Chris, of course, is so wonderful. He was there. And of course, he goes, Oh, babe. You know how he says that? Oh, babe. And I was like, Stop. Don't be nice to me. I was like, Don't be nice to me right now. Don't be nice to me right now because if you're nice to me, I'll cry. Just let's get through this. So, and he then he was like, Okay. And we shot the scene. And if you watch, when I see Chris, I just go, Oh, he's he's being wonderful as Dyson, but I know yeah. he's actually, it's Chris taking care of Anna in that scene to try to help me not cry. So, and the reason that I was crying, I remember I was very tired. Okay, everybody. I was very tired. Yeah. You had someone a lot on your plate. Mm-hmm. Right before that, my close up, someone, not a cast member, just so you're, so we're clear, um, was talking to me about what I should and shouldn't be eating. And my my body and my weight, which was kind of a shocker 
And God bless the person because I know that particularly then there was more rigid ideas about how people should look on camera and things like that. But it was so upsetting to me and really badly timed <laughs> the conversation, yeah, obviously. I was just going to uh, say. The worst timing. So that's a little behind the scenes secret. That's a little bit of a sad secret. And I debated sharing it today, but I'm going to share it because that's what we're doing on this podcast. I'm so glad you're sharing because yeah. these are um, unfortunate, but real things that happened. Yeah. Um, and thank you for being open about that. And that makes me so angry, makes me so livid that you, first of all, were told that um, you looked so sexy and gorgeous mm. and phenomenal. And Thank there you. was not a single negative thing or idea that anyone should have been throwing your way because completely well, ludicrous. Thank you. And, and the, the fact that you are um, leading a show, you have the, the, the show is like on your back. If, if that's, you know, that's an analogy I can use is that that's an analogy. Yeah. Um, you're working insanely long hours. You're, you know, again, it's season one. It's like the, the first episodes you're discovering, you've got a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. And for someone to interrupt your creative process and have a conversation with you like that is so upsetting. And it, I can was, understand. it was a bummer. Yeah. It was a yeah. bummer. But I think the, the bigger lesson too, for me, uh, looking back is that I think everyone, even the person who had this conversation with me just is so affected by how things should be and how people should be, or like ideas in our head that don't even matter. Yeah. You know, I always thought Bo should look extremely fertile mm -hmm. <laughs> and kind of <laughs> juicy. So, oh, yeah, I, you know, I kept her, I kept her that way. Um, juicy. I like that A little word. juicy. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your kind words, Ksenia. Um, let's talk. Oh, I have a question. What, uh, what worked and what didn't work in this episode? I will tell you exactly what didn't work for me in this episode. <laughs> tell me. And it's laughable. Tell me. My security guard walk. Oh my God. <laughs> so. I tried on the security yeah. outfit yeah. and then it's always the props department, right? That's going to bring you the belts with the taser and the flashlight yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. So that kind of gets thrown on you on set. So you haven't like practiced in it so that, so you're like, <laughs> okay, they're getting ready to film roll sound. You know, they're putting the belt on you. Like, oh yeah, here's yeah, the yeah. belt. There's the belt and action. So then I'm walking and I'm like, oh, I actually, I can't put my arms down. They're like, yeah, you know, you walk <laughs> like a security guard. So the first time you're seeing that is when I'm actually on camera um, doing that. And, um, I look ridiculous. I look like a robot walk. So You're what so didn't work for me in that episode was the, my security guard walk was a definitely, it needed, it needed a little finesse. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, let's see what didn't work. Here's my question. Okay. How did Bo get out of the, the, the chains? <laughs> Well, so fast. I have to say they didn't look too tight. You true, know? true. Yeah. But for, for a second, I thought maybe there was like one close up and I thought maybe you had like a pin or something. Like maybe Kenzie had taught you to like always keep like a hairpin on you. But I saw some action and then you went free and I was like, hmm. it's my guam about this episode. Yeah, I, I agree. I was like, it looks like she, she's not really that restrained. <laughs> um Maybe she wanted Gina to just be a little more scared, just just for like a minute. Oh, can I that say our like stunt that. our stunt team is so incredible, and that little creature, God bless, whose name was Alan. That creature mm -hmm. had a name. His name was Alan, and Alan was a great stunt performer on our show. He was, um, yeah, and very slippery to fight in that episode. <laughs> you could actually see me. I'm fighting him, and there's a close up of me wiping my hands on my pants because there they were is? they were so wet. They were, they were so wet. Yeah. Um, cause he was, Excuse he me, was, he, yeah, he was really, he was super slippery. Um, and also, yeah, he was an incredible performer. He, he really looked, um, terrifying. He did. Oh, the, the CGI of his mouth. Oh my God. Oh, it's disgusting. It was but disgusting. like in the best way, in the, in the best way. Here's my question for you. As okay. I was watching that moment with the lips and the stuff and you're having to react to it, like what was actually happening on the day. Obviously that was added in later. So did you, how did you not die of laughter? 
And just what, what did that look like? Well, I mean, it's a lot like the succubus kiss, right? Like it, 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 everything looks ridiculous until you see it in a post. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and you know, I re I remember filming that whole sequence with Alan and Chris and you, you're there at the end and all that stuff because fight stuff or any kind of action takes hours and hours and hours to film, even if it's something kind of simple, it just does. So I remember being in that place for, it felt like a, like at least two An days eternity. or something. <laughs> I, I felt for, like forever. Um, and it looks completely ridiculous, but good stunt people, which every single stunt person on our show was, they make you feel like things are actually happening. Mm -hmm. Um, even though you don't really see it till after, uh, they're just, they're so invested physically. And so mm -hmm. Alan was like that. He could move incredibly. So, um, he was so great. Yeah. I really just had to try not to slide off of him. <laughs> frankly, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was kind of like that. Anna's out of frame. Cut. <laughs> Anna's out of frame. She has slid into the little pool. Into the, into of, the lake. Yeah. <laughs> into the little lake it. we've built. I love it. Um, anything else you want to add? What else can we talk about? I mean, it can was we just talk such about a, your hair. Oh my gosh. Sure. Yeah. Your hair. I was almost like, it was so, I just love that style on you so much. Like the, the middle oh, braid. I love the middle braid. Props to, um, Sandy Zakalowski. Yes. Um, yes. who is a genius and mm -hmm. just, just loved your hair. And in every scene, I was like almost distracted by how much I loved your hair. I was oh like, gosh. Sonia, focus on everything well, else. You know, it looks beautiful. It wasn't until I did Lost Girl that I really understood that hair that you had hair on that your I head. had hair on my head, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, no." Um, that well, because I mean, Kenzie with all the wigs and all the incredible looks too. I didn't really understand that hair and makeup really tell a story. Mm. You know, they really do, um, and that's something that's really powerful as an actor. You know, like the, the, everything is considered uh, when it comes to hair and makeup, and I remember Sandy saying things like, you know, you're, you're seen at th uh, 360, you know, we're trying to think of things that look good that way. I'm like, oh yeah, because <laughs> you know, I've, I've looked at myself in the mirror flat and just made the front look good. But right. on camera, you see the whole piece and it also has to tell a story. And what I love about the story of Bo's hair in that episode, you know, except like the m middle mohawk kind of made her look like a warrior. Mm. But before that, it's kind of loose and innocent. There's this like youth about it. Yeah. That shows you where she's at. Um, yeah, it was nice to have story. those two uh, looks in yes. one episode. Yes, yeah. it To was. go from like romantic, lovey-dovey bow to... Yes. You watch out. You watch out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ksenia Solo. So many feels. Um, so many feels. <laughs> and it's so good to do this with you. And Me it's too. been so long. Um, you know, we, we really wanted to do this for the fans because as you know, Lost Girl fans uh, are far and wide and still as loyal as ever. And um, it's really special for me to be with you here today. It's and cool. I thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. And you're right that we have the greatest fans in the world. We do. They have been so. Um, supportive and like mm -hmm. loving and wonderful. So yeah. they, I think will always stay with us no matter where we go moving forward. Um, lots of love to you. Lots of love to you as always. And Bo and Kenzie forever. Bo and Kenzie forever, <laughs> forever and ever, forever and ever. Thank you, Miss Solo. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Big kiss. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Spotlight. We have a very special guest today, I have to say. I'm very thrilled that she is here. Being an incredible makeup artist involves much more than putting makeup on people's faces. A great makeup artist, like today's Spotlight, also tells a story. As an actor, it might be one of the most intimate relationships that you have on set. With today's spotlight, I knew I was always taken care of, I would always look my best, 
and that if anyone messed with me, this lady would turn into a tiger and chase them out of the (laughs) hair makeup trailer. (laughs) Uh, I know I speak for all of our cast from Lost Girl when I say she is truly one of the greats. Please welcome Linda McCormick. Yay! How are you? Hello. I'm great. You're making me cry by all the wonderful (laughs) Things you're saying. <laughs> Honestly, Linda, this whole like rewatch and revisit of the first season has made me very emotional. Well, I'm sure. It's so great to see you uh, here with us today. And certainly it is one of the most intimate relationships on set. I mean, literally for everyone listening, a makeup artist and you are li- physically very close to each other. Yes. You start your day together. Um and I really learned on Lost Girl just how much it's it's more than just about makeup on the face, that it really is about crafting and cultivating a story. So my first question for you um, that I think people will find very interesting is that creatives on a show like makeup artists, hair, wardrobe, they often have to go through a similar process that actors do to get their jobs. You have to have a vision for the show and develop a vision, you know, with producers and then bring that to life on screen. So my question is, how did you approach that with Lost Girl? How did you come to get the job and where did you begin the process of creating Bo and Tamsin and Kenzie and all of the looks? Well, originally on the pilot, there was another makeup artist who was hired because she was a friend of uh, the, the directors. That's right. I really, really wanted this show. I had read it, and the hairdresser on the show, Sandy Sokolowski, and I were friends. So we had decided we were going to have to put some kind of a game plan. We were already working on another episodic. So we asked the lead actress if she would mind being our muse while we did a selection of looks on her. So Sandy is a very skilled hairdresser, but even more of a photographer. So what we did was ask this woman to take, to allow us to take some pictures. So we gave some ideas of what we thought the characters on Lost Girl would look like. So we did a series of five different looks, which he photographed. We printed those pictures and we called the producer, Wanda Chaffee. She said she would be happy to see what we had to let us present the entire, um, uh, the entire invitation to Lost Girl. So Sandy and I went with about 30 pictures and we put them all down on the counter and we said, you need to hire us because we want this show and this is our vision for the show. And I think the producers, the creatives weren't really sure what was going to happen with the characters. And Sandy and I felt that if we started um, Anna off as the girl next door and started to build gradually, not give too much of it away, but build an arc where her and Ksenia became warriors, that that's how we would draw the audience in. So eventually the wardrobe changed, the hair changed, the makeup changed, and we ended up with the lost girl. That I mean, I had no idea, by the way, of that story. So it's yes. so that's so cool for me to hear as well. And you know, in watching and re-watching this first season, you can see all of that. You can see this kind of um more youthful and simpler looking bow. Um, you know, still beautiful makeup and, and, and hair and things, but there was like a bit more of an innocence to her as, and then she develops into like, you know, the warrior look, the hair, yeah. the eyes. I mean, it was so incredible. So it's incredible, honestly, for me to hear that story. It um, was, it was one of those things where Sandy and I were not backing down. We, some shows you read, um, in episodic as well as feature films, and you know that your heart and soul is going to be there and you need to be that creative to to get there. Sandy and I believe so firmly in Lost Girl, so firmly. And we had, we talked for hours on end about where each individual character was going, who was joined, who was love interests. 
um, it, it kind of phased our, our own lives at that time because there were so many things going on with both the crew and cast. There were marriages, there were breakups, there were children, and we all bonded together. And that's why Sandy and I felt like we were going to have history. And we ended up with, I ended up with four of the five years of history and still have my friends and still think of Lost Girl as a growing uh, period for a lot of us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we get the, we get to go to all different kinds of cons, Linda, and we meet so many, uh, fans of the show because these characters matter to them. And so yes. what's really interesting for that, from, for them to hear from you is that you were such a pivotal part in creating those characters. You know, we didn't just show up as Bo and Kenzie and Dyson nice. and everybody. It was a, it was a team and group effort. So, um, what are some of your best memories of working on Lost Girl? Some of my best memories, how much fun we all had. Yes. Some of the very um, wonderful conversations that a room full of women will always be enticing. Mm -hmm. um, the camaraderie amongst us, and that was 10 years ago, 10, yeah. 12 years ago. More, yeah. We talked about everything that was happening in, in our world at that time. I mean, now it's pretty normal for women to get together and talk about the the climate of what's happening with women. But we were talking about it 12 years ago and fully supporting each other. If somebody had a breakup, if somebody had a baby, if somebody had a falling out, everybody was there. All those women were there to support. Sandy sometimes was the only man in the room, but he always had something great to say. He did. He always <laughs> He'd always come in with like a one-liner that would just be... Yeah make us all laugh. And I think that that was probably the most instrumental thing for me um, growing over that five years yeah. was being on Lost Girl. And yeah. then, of course, Anna set me up with my now partner, who I had known for many years, and he ended up leaving his partner. I ended up leaving mine. And when I found out that he um, was not with her, I asked him out and Anna was giving me a lot of pointers as to what <laughs> I should do. And we've been together eight and a half years now. It, look, so, I am no uh, relationship or dating expert, but I will tell everyone listening that for Linda and Joe, there was like literally just like a heart around them. So it was really just about helping that, you know, I, I was so encouraging of that relationship because it you, you could just see that it was... It was a no-brainer. It was you guys were meant to be <laughs> together, and I love that you guys got together on Lost Girl. I Me think too. That's so great. Me um, too. What are some of the biggest challenges of your job on a day-to-day -day basis, and what were some of your biggest challenges on Lost Girl? I think your biggest challenge is to separate yourself from being a makeup artist to being the den mother of all of your kids, right. um, because I take both of them incredibly serious. Sometimes uh, to the point where I would like to just chop somebody's head off because of the fact that they're not being responded to a worry that you might have. If you were upset, if an actor is upset about how they look, how they feel that day, they just have a lot of dialogue and they're just not really in tune to it, then I feel as a den mother, it's my job to get them ready. To have that conversation. If they have to have a big cry, then let them have that cry. We had if, many big cries. We had some big cries. We had some big cries. But, you know, that's what we do. And then we yeah. move on. We're all passionate um, artists and you bonded together and it was great. So making sure that the actors leave the trailer happy to for them never to have to think about how they look because I'm always at the monitor. I'm always there. And I sense on those days that sometimes you just need to go in and give them a hug. Yeah. And sometimes it might bring them to tears, as I remember once, yeah. where you were trying so hard to keep it together. Yeah. And I told them, just please stop. Let me just go in and deal with Anna. And I gave you a hug. You started to cry. We went off. You cried it out. You came right back and you were fine. You cleaned me up. And, cleaned yeah. you up yeah. and away you go. Exactly. No, you yeah. were, I mean, I have, I have such warm memories. You, you, you're just such a, well, guys, for everyone listening, Linda is like just a foxy lady. That's the only way I can describe her. She's so beautiful and sensual and 
present and uh, lives in that moment with you. And so it's it's so key. It's just so key. It's uh, it really is an incredible experience. And I'm so I'm so happy that you're here. With I'm us happy today. that you asked. Um, yeah, I. Uh, so as I mentioned a couple times, Rachel and I have gone to several cons. The whole cast has gone to several cons, and we often have so many people that show up dressed like. Bo, Kenzie, Tamsin. Oh my God, I love it. If you had to give them some advice to create, let's say, like the bow eye or oh. some kind of palette, what would you say to our listeners? I would say get your eyelashes out, your black liner, mm -hmm. uh, your contour, and a neutral mouth, and put as much on as you can feasibly, feasibly wear, and you're going to have it. And then when you think it's enough, put more on. Put more and then when on. you think it's too much, actually one more layer will do. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's actually one thing I learned from playing Bo in terms of the makeup. Like I can wear a lot of you makeup. Can wear, you can wear a like, lot of makeup. A ton of makeup. And it actually, yeah. it creates that look. Like it's, it's, it was never too much ever. You can't be um, sure when it comes to applying eye makeup on Bo. No, because you just keep going and you keep thinking, I don't and think building. it's quite enough yet. And then you just go in with some more black and guess what? It works. <laughs> and then remember like towards the end of every season, my skin would be so tired that you'd literally be like, like trying to get the makeup just to stay <laughs> on there. Like just for one close up, we got to get the shot. I can remember just us laughing a lot about that. Um, I have one more final question for you, Linda. Okay. If anyone listening, um, is interested in becoming a makeup artist or interested in getting into your field, what would you advise them? How would you advise them to start? I would advise that they don't go, and I'm sure I'm not going to be liked for this very much, but spending astronomical amounts of money at a makeup school. I think that um, in the last few years, that training on some levels has gone downhill. So I, because I have taught for the last 18 years, I see in a class of 17 kids, if I pluck one out of that class, then I'm, I feel like I've done my job. Um, I think buy yourself a book. There's lots on Amazon on how to become a makeup artist. Read it from beginning to end and see if that's what you want to do. Think about the long hours. Think about what you're going to sacrifice with your family that you're not always going to be there and you have to have a very understanding partner and family mm -hmm. and then try your hand at it. Use community theaters, use any, um, any kind of resource within your own community and see if it's what you want to do. It's not just about applying makeup. It's really about reading the skip, what the script, what can you offer? Um, and how proud you can make yourself as well as that actor when it comes to being friends. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you Thank everyone you. for listening. You were so, we're all so fortunate um, to be joined by you today. And I really appreciate your time. Thank and, you. And um, all of your wonderful words. And Thank you very much. Soon. It was wonderful seeing you. You too. Uh... Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast, which is produced by Anna Silk, Rachel Scarston, and Seth Cooperman, with theme music by our very own Blood King, Rick Howland. Please rate, review, and share the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast. This enables us to grow and to continue bringing you exciting new content every week. And if you don't already, follow us on Instagram at Lost Girl Rewatch, on our YouTube channel, the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast, and you can also subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus episodes made just for you and get early access to all of our episodes. Solo, I have a very serious question for you. Okay. Now, and you have to spend the rest of your life like this. Okay. Would you rather spend the rest of your life 
having to speak like Yoda or breathing like Darth Vader? And why? Definitely Yoda, because he is smart. He is and smart, yes. Is, does that answer the question? It does, <laughs> no. but, but then you have to spend the rest of your life talking the, backwards. The beginning <laughs> of your sentence at the end, and everyone would just get so irritated with you, wouldn't they? I know, but I feel like that's so much better than just like hyperventilating for the rest of your life. I I hear that. That That's valid. But I have actually put quite a bit of thought into this question. Because breath work is so popular now, I feel like... Oh, you're taking a yogic approach. I I feel like I could take a a, a yogic as opposed to a a yodic. Oh, yodic? (laughs) Can I say yodic? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. We just fell into the gutter. quote it as (laughs) thing. Yo, Dick.